Hey, good morning once again, options traders. And I thought a good question to pose to the group would be, what does a gamma curve look like? And I thought this is a good question because it's one of the main reasons that traders get trapped near expiration. So they might, for example, have a call option, the stock moves in their favor, but the call option doesn't really respond all that much. Stock moves some more, call option just doesn't respond that much. And then they get to expiration, the stock barely moves against them and they get completely wiped out. And they're just left scratching their heads going, what happened? Why was my option so incredibly sensitive as we got closer to expiration? Well, these are problems with gamma. It comes from not understanding gamma, what it is visually, and why it becomes so dangerous as we get closer to expiration. So to see why, let's go find out what a gamma curve looks like. And as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It goes a long way into promoting the channel and is always greatly appreciated. So let's start off with a bell curve. So remember that every stock price has an implied bell curve sitting directly at that price. And what it really means is that there's only so far that the stock can move up or that it can move down. So here's our current stock price and the shape of this bell curve comes from the volatility and the time to expiration. The more time that we have until expiration and or the more volatility, the shorter and wider the curve becomes, which is just another way to show that the stock price could move up higher or it could move down lower. So we're just going to keep the current stock price fixed for this demonstration. We could also do it where we move the curve, but let's keep the curve fixed and look at different strikes. So let's say that we have this area down here, and this is the strike that we're looking at. So if this were a put, what we're saying is that the probability for this put to go in the money is very low. It's just this blue plus this little gray tail out here because the stock is way out here. Puts go in the money if the stock price falls in this direction. So we can see, based on this current bell curve, it's not real likely. And so this little shaded area to the left would be the probability or the delta, roughly speaking, for that put option. However, if this were a call option strike, remember calls or puts, puts or calls, they're just different ways of looking at the same graph. Then we would say the probability for the call option to go out of the money would be very low because it's a low strike call. Call strike is down here, the stock is way up here. It's an in the money option. So the delta for the call would be this entire gray area. Or we could say the probability for the call to fall out of the money would be this left tail. All right, so that'll hopefully get your bearings straight. So if we're looking at a put, the probability for the put to go in the money will be all of the colored bars to the left. And for the call option, it will be the probability for the call to fall out of the money. So let's say that we look at a different strike. We increase the strike. So now we're looking, let's say, up to here. Now what do we see? Now we've got more area to the left. There's a higher probability for that put to go in the money, and there's a higher probability for that call to fall out of the money. Still might be unlikely, but we've at least increased that probability, which is, again, roughly delta. So notice what happened, though. When we increase the strike, look what happened to the size of these bars we went from the blue to the red. So we have a very big, relatively speaking, increase in delta. And we can see that this is why we get these exponential increases for these out of the money strikes. Now let's say that we move the strike up some more. So now we're looking at this strike. If this is a put strike, it's still out of the money, but there's not all that bad of a chance for it to go in the money. We have all of this area to the left and that would be the same probability for that call to fall out of the money. But once again, the thing to notice is that the change from the red to the green bar, look at how big that green bar is. That's the additional area that we've now increased for, let's say, for this put to go in the money. And this additional probability is the increase in delta. And that means this green bar is gamma. So gamma is just showing us how much additional delta or how much additional probability we have for these options to either go in or out of the money. Let's look at some even higher strikes. Let's move up here. 
So if this is a put option, notice that it's now pretty close to the current stock price. The probability that it falls in the money is still less than 50%, but it's not insignificant. We've got a pretty good area of this total bell curve starting to get filled in. And if this is a call strike, it's in the money, right? Lower strike call down here, stock is above the strike. It's an in the money call. So the probability for it to fall out of the money would be this area. We could also say that the delta would be this gray area. So now we're seeing that the put delta, the colored bars on the left, and the call delta, the gray area to the right, equal the entire bell curve. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But right now, I just want you to see that every time we increase the strike price, that the height of these bars and the total area under this curve is getting bigger. We're adding, we're making it more sensitive to delta. And that's saying that our gamma is getting larger. All right, so what happens if we put the strike right here equal with the current stock price? Well, it's now an at the money option. And I think most of you know that the at the money options have the highest gamma. And that's because we've got the tallest bar right here, this kind of orange bar. We're at the peak of the curve. We also know that the at the money strikes have roughly speaking a 50 delta. So this at the money put has half of the area covered to the left. There's a 50% chance for this put to go in the money. And if this is the call strike, there's a 50% chance for it to fall out of the money. Or we could say there's a 50% chance for it to go in the money, which would just be the gray area. But it's a 50-50 shot. Let's increase the strike some more. Let's bring it up to here. Now we've got a higher strike call. This is now an out of the money call and it's an in the money put. So because this is an in the money put, the probability that it stays in the money is all of these colored bars over here to the left. So it's now greater than 50%. Or we could say the probability that it falls out of the money is this gray area. If this is instead a call strike, it's an out of the money call. So the probability that it goes in the money is just this gray area and the probability that it falls out of the money is the colored areas here to the left because it's already out of the money. So the chances are much greater that it will stay out of the money. Watch what happens as we increase the strike some more. Do you see what's happening? If this is the put option, the chances for it to stay in the money are increasing. The colored bars over here on the left are getting to be a bigger proportion of the entire bell curve. And if this is a call strike, it's out of the money and the probability that it stays out of the money is all of these colored bars here. The probability that it moves in the money is just this little gray area because the stock is still out here. It hasn't even gotten up to the strike price yet. Let's move the strike up some more. What happens? Now we're up to here. Much greater chance for this put option to stay in the money and the deltas therefore must be increasing. So we could also add up the total area of the bell curve under these colored bars relative to the entire curve. So we might be at 80 something percent. That would be roughly the delta of that put. And then this area would be the delta of the call. But we can see that as we increase these strikes that we're now starting to do what to these colored bars? They're starting to shrink. So yes, we are increasing deltas, but we're increasing at a decreasing rate. So watch what happens if we increase to an even higher strike. Did we increase the deltas of our put? Yep, we went from this green color to this purple. So the additional deltas were just this purple. Not a lot, relatively speaking. Certainly not as much as when we added like this orange bar or this blue one. Added a lot of deltas in here. So if this is a put option, we've got a very high probability for that put to stay in the money, all of these colored bars. Or we could say a very high probability for this call to stay out of the money, all of these colored bars. Or if we look at the gray area, this is the probability for the call to go in the money. But we can see they're all just different sides of the bell curve. We're always looking at the total area under the bell curve. And of course, the bell curve again is generated from volatility and time to expiration. So if we come out here some more, 
we come to a higher strike, now you can see what's happening. We're adding fewer and fewer deltas. We come up here, what happens? We get a super high strike out here. What we're saying is that this put option is virtually guaranteed to be in the money. It doesn't matter if the stock makes this giant move way out here, it's still never going to get to this put strike, statistically speaking. And conversely, there's just virtually no chance for this call to go in the money because that would be the probability out here to the right, which is virtually zero. And therefore, you can see that the height of these bars are now virtually zero. You can barely see them. And that means your gamma is zero, your delta is one, at least for this put, and that's because 100% of the bell curve is to the left of that strike. Okay, so hopefully it gives you a better visualization of the connection between delta and gamma and how they relate to your call and put strikes. So let's see it in action. Let's go to a pricing model. I've got the stock and strike at 100 at the money. Let's put it 30 days to expiration and 30% volatility. Doesn't really matter. Pick some. Try it out for yourself. And over here, you'll see that the call delta, 0.5172, added to the put delta, 0.4828, ignoring the minus sign, add up to one. And for the reasons that we just saw, it just depends on which side of the bell curve that you're looking at. So what would happen if we change the strikes? Let's go to a 90 strike, which is an in the money call and an out of the money put. So now, go back to that bell curve demonstration, we have now filled in a very large portion of that bell curve, 0.8976, or about almost 90%. So the probability for this call to be in the money is about 90%, and therefore, the what's called the complement, if we make these add up to one, ignoring this minus sign, there's about a 10.24% chance for that put to be in the money. So again, add 0.8976 and 0.1024, and they add up to one, because that is the total area under the bell curve. So once you understand those mechanics, now we can say, what does a gamma curve look like? Well, you should understand it's going to look like a bell curve. And for many of you who have Thinkorswim, you can actually chart this on your analyze package. So here is the bell curve or the gamma curve, let's say with 60 days to expiration. Okay, so what we're looking at is a chart of gamma. So let's say that the stock is 100, and this is again, 60 days to expiration. If the strike is 100, we trace a line up here, and we look left, and we see that our gamma is going to be about 0.05. But if the strike, let's say, is a 105, line up right here at 105, we look left, we're going to drop down to somewhere around 0.04 or a little less. If the strike is 115, what's our gamma? Remember, this isn't a profit and loss diagram. It's a gamma diagram. It's telling you what your gammas are going to be. So we look up and we see it's going to be maybe 0.01. The gammas are shrinking, and that's because those little colored bars are starting to get smaller and smaller. If we come out here to the 125 strike, stock's down here at 100. We're looking at the 125 strike. What's the gamma? Gamma's going to be almost zero. And we saw that because those little colored bars that we're adding over here for our deltas are virtually invisible. So this is what a gamma curve looks like. 10 days later, it's going to do this because there's less time. This is assuming that we have the same volatility. So the curve is going to get taller and skinnier. We don't have as much of a chance for the stock to move out here to the right or to fall out here to the left. Getting taller and skinnier. 30 days, 20 days, 10 days. What do you think expiration looks like? There's your reason why your options become super unstable if they're at the money at expiration. You can have a situation where that call option goes one penny in the money and it's going to become delta one, or it's going to dip one penny below and hit at the money, or one cent out of the money, and it's going to go delta zero. See, that doesn't happen when you've got 30 or 60 days or six months till expiration. That stock might make a two or three dollar move and barely add to your deltas. But see, that's not true when you get to expiration. That gamma curve theoretically can go to infinity. And again, that's just because you could have a fraction of a penny move going from an at the money option to 
fractions of a penny in the money, and those deltas are going to swing from zero to one. And that's why those positions become super, super unstable. So this is why you have to be very careful, regardless of the strategy. Let's say you've got a vertical spread, and it's sitting right at the strike of that short. And if that stock makes a tiny adverse move, you could watch all of those profits evaporate. And that's not a delta problem, it's a gamma problem. So that's why you have to understand the mechanics of gamma. So I hope that helped. So for anybody who would like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new candlesticks and technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find the link in the description below.